So it may seem like a little bit of a strange thing to say to uh, to say that it feels like a relief that the striper stocks have uh, been officially declared uh, overfished, but to me it feels like a relief because now you know they're forced to do something about it, and it's something that you know anyone who's fished for the last decade or more knows has been already occurring for much longer than that, but very little has been done. So a good side effect of that has been that um, we're seeing a lot of people wanting to kind of hold themselves accountable for the um, for conserving the stock. And then one of the ways that people are saying they want to do this is to sort of reduce the number of trebles that they put on their plugs. Um, so we're seeing some people say that they're going to take off the tail uh, treble and replace all of them with a side washer, regardless of the um, regardless of the plug. Others are taking a little bit of a more drastic measure and saying they're going to use inline hooks on everything. Um, we both believe that those are definitely good measures to take, um, but we also don't think that um, that the problem is necessarily the number of hooks themselves, but it's actually the tail hook itself. Um, if you look back through your own personal history, um, you know how many fish have you caught that were hooked in the gills um, or the eye or in the throat? on the front hook of the plug. Um, for me, that's, you know, I could count that on one hand. Um, then if you go back through your own personal history again, and you think about how many fish you've caught that were hooked on the, t on the tail hook in the gills or in the eye or some other damaging place. And for me, looking back over my history, that number is just way too high. And so, you know, those are those fish that you're you're either putting back with you know a big cloud of blood behind them and you're saying to yourself well, that one has no chance or you're saying you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the thing that seems like the right thing and take it home even though I like to I would much prefer to release the fish so it seems like the answer should be simple you know you're just going to take the tail hook off of every plug and move on with that and in some cases that does work in other cases not so much so <clears throat> that's sort of where the story it begins in some ways. Yeah. Uh, I have been using one hook on a lot of my plugs for some time. Yes, for the fish. Yes, to help the fish for all the points that we're talking about. Right. But also for kind of selfish reasons, and that is with, you know, one treble hook you can cram a lot more plugs in your bag. And also, I wetsuit a lot, and when you're on the rock, having one hook just makes things a lot safer for me. Uh, I've had quite a few hooks in my hand, even last season I had two that mm -hmm. went past the bar. So I started with the red fin and I took the hook off because I said that the front hook won't make a huge difference because a lot of times you take the rear tail hook off a plug and it can drive it down because there's more weight forward. So I started with red fin because it's generally a more shallow plug and that works fine. Put it in the water, it wiggled, it caught fish. I didn't feel any reason to do anything different sure. than that. I then progressed from there and I went from plug to plug, you know, taking hooks off and seeing how they worked. Yeah. One of the ones I really like, and this is an old really beat up one of these Mike's Custom Pikeys, they're one of my favorite plugs. And I found that, you know, if you look at this plug, the hooks are extremely close together. And I said, this plug, I mean, this hook, excuse me, is totally redundant. And so I just upsize the hook and I just go with one and it worked fine. I threw it in the water, it wiggles, I continue to catch. Okay. And it works great. So for me, being that I have a you know long history as a plug builder and plug modifier, I just felt like I can't go out confidently um, by just removing the tail hook from a plug, knowing that all of these plugs are designed with that tail hook on there. Um, so that has been considered into the into the design and factored into the way the plug moves or acts in the water. So I needed to come up with a way to preserve the intended action of the plug. Um, and I tried a lot of different things. I started with heavy flags, you know, a lot of bucktail, a lot of feathers, whatever. Uh, that was not satisfactory for me. Um, I tried all kinds of other things. Um, talked to people about it, got ideas from other people, and nothing was satisfactory. Um, finally, I moved on to um, these little worm weights, which we're going to show you more about in a, um, in a minute. But the main thing is that um, it does change the action of the plug. If you take that tail hook off, you're getting a different action, which isn't always a bad thing. Yeah, so one night Dave and I were fishing together, and me not really thinking about it, but just doing this for the reasons I said, you know, I want what's best for the fish, but I don't want hooks in my hand and I want to cram more plugs in my bag. I had a plug that I was using with one hook, 
which was the same that Dave was using with two hooks. Yeah. And on that particular night, it actually made a difference. It did, yeah. For, for whatever reason on that particular night, which we won't go into for brevity reasons, yeah. I, I, I was catching more fish. I had more hits because the plug was a little bit more splashy. It was yeah. a little, had a little bit more rolling action. Yeah. And then what that did was make me think, oh my God, all these nights in the past where I thought the pikey or the redfin or the dart or especially like super strike yeah. needles I've been using with one hook for a while. I didn't think they were working because I didn't think the, the fish wanted them in those nights. Right. But what if it was the action? Right. What if that's what was happening? Right. And so that's really where all of a sudden we were like, you know, for me anyways, Dave kind of having this thought along, but for all of a sudden we were like, this really matters. Yeah. And so we, we know this is about conservation. Right. This is primarily about conservation. Right. But we also concede that we don't want to change your success. Right. We want you to catch the same amount of fish. We want to catch the same amount of fish. Right. And so we wanted to come up with a solution that would address that. Absolutely. All right, so now we're going to show you what that system is and how to put the things together. And um, we're going to show you some videos, some comparisons that show that there's very little, if any, change um, to the plugs when you, when you do it properly. And um, let's go to that now. So Dave and I have taken some footage of some popular plugs and we are going to show you side-by-side -side comparison between identical plugs rigged with and without this worm weight, uh, the weight to counteract the balance of removing the hook. Uh, we want to point out that these are just a few examples. We have done extensive testing with the Super Strike Darter and this works fine as well as some of Dave's needles that he makes and some other plugs. However, those plugs are really hard to get footage of without a diver. So these ones were the easiest ones to get footage of, but we want to point out that you can apply this system to any plug. It doesn't just work for these. Uh, we're going to first focus on the Redfin because it encompasses in our minds one of the most widely used class of plugs and that is the plastic swimmer. So let's start with this footage. So the first plug that we have here is the normally rigged Redfin. And this gives you a good idea of what it looks like when it swims. So next here we have a modified Redfin with the worm weight on it. And as you can see, the action is almost identical. Um, we actually both slightly prefer the action of the plug with the weight, but it's essentially exactly the same. And here is a quick side-by-side -side view. As you can see, the plug on the right, which is the one with the weight, has slightly exaggerated motion. And you can tune this based on the length of the wire which we'll get to at the end of the video when we go over rigging. So the next plug we're going to show you here is a Danny. And this is the regular rigged one with two hooks. And as you can see in this situation, this plug actually doesn't have a very dramatic action. However, you can see, especially when it gets in the current, how it generally wobbles back and forth. So here is the alternatively rigged one with one hook and the balanced counterweight. Uh, again, we kind of like the way this plug swims. To be fair, while these are identical plugs, there could be some little bit of difference between the way the lip was tuned or something like that. But you get the point, and the point is that the weight doesn't make any difference in the action, and in fact, it may make it better. And here is a quick side-by-side -side view. Uh, the next plug we have here is the dock and we have a normal rigged one first
And then we have a alternatively rigged counterbalanced plug. And again, you can see there's no difference. And then I'm gonna give you a side-by-side -side comparison window within window with the bottom plug being the modified one and the picture within the picture being the regular plug. And you can see there's almost no difference. And next up we have the perennial favorite, uh, the, the pencil popper. This is a guppy three ounce pencil popper. So before I tell you which of these pencil poppers is the modified and which is the standard rigged plug, I just want you to watch them for a moment and try to guess. So the answer is that the one on the right, the chartreuse or green plug, is the one that is modified, but you can see that there is virtually no difference. And finally, at the very beginning of this video, I mentioned that I've been using the Mike's Custom Pikey with one hook for a while, and I'm going to show you a couple of clips from one of the first nights that I tested this out. Uh, this was footage from me proving to myself that they work side by side. So the footage I've been playing in the background of the yellow and white pikey, that is the regular plug with two hooks. And then we have the plug with only one hook. And as you can see, there's no difference. Please note that I've caught so many fish on this plug that it's gotten pretty beat up and because I love it so much, I've spray painted it. This is not Mike's finish. This is my own hack job. So next up, we are gonna show you uh, how to rig these plugs uh, with the weights so that you can do this on your own plugs. And again, we wanna say one more time, just to reiterate the point, that these are just some examples of plugs. These are not the only plugs that we tested and this is not the only plugs that this weight system works on. You can make this work for literally any plug. Okay, so here's the solution. Um, basically, it's just these little worm weights. Um, these are, you know, what you use in fresh water ahead of a plastic worm. They have a little hole in the middle, they have a little recess in the back, and um, you can buy them because freshwater fishermen are so, you know, everything they use is so small and so light. Um, you can buy them in almost any fraction of an ounce. So you can get them that roughly match up with any uh, hook weight. But this is an eighth of an ounce. This is what matches up with a 4.0 treble, which is what I use mostly. So that's the one I'm going to use for the example. Um, they're very simple to make. Um, and there's, there's also two little sort of differences in them. So I have the one that's got the long shank and I have the one that's got the short shank. Now I originally I thought that the long shank one was going to be the one because I thought I was making up the the length of the of the treble hook and I thought that having that weight further back and the way it would swing would um, would more closely mimic uh, an actual treble hook but I was wrong about that. Um, so on anything that's a swimmer, uh, anything that has its own action built in, so a darter, a swimmer, a bottle plug, anything like that, um, you want to use the short shanked uh, version. However, anything that has angler imparted action, like a spook or a pencil popper or a glide bait, you want to use the long shank. And the reason for that is, I found out afterwards, is that those plugs that you're working with your rod, they, they rely a little bit on the action of, uh, well, they rely a little bit on the, the, the sort of the countering of the action because the weight of the hook swings in the opposite direction that the plug is moving. And then it kind of comes back around when it finishes and it, it accentuates that action. So the longer ones work, again, for the plugs that you're going to that you're going to impart the action yourself. This is stainless steel TIG wire. It is um, it's 0 0.035 diameter. Um, so it's not the 16th inch that everybody uses for plug building. It's the next size down. 
it fits through the hole in this thing perfectly. Um, and so here's how I make these things. So the first thing that you do is you just use a piece of needle, just use a pair of needle nose pliers and you leave about a three quarters of an inch tag end or so and you're just going to bend this into an elongated hook. And this is an eighth inch drill bit. Anything that's close to that will do. And ideally you would use a vise, but I'm going to use a pair of vise grips. And I'm just going to loosen those up a little bit. And so now we're going to take this, I'm just going to loop that around there. Use the needle nose to hold this here because that will guide the two wires together. And then I'm using another pair of vice grips that are adjusted to close completely. And you're just going to grab this like that. And you're just going to squeeze these together. I'm going to do a little bit better than that, usually. Of course, why would it work? So the end result is just a loop in the end of the wire and then you're just going to trim just a little ahead of that, that interior bend there which leaves you with essentially a, an open eye side wash hook. Um, from there we're just going to take one of these weights and we're going to thread that on here like this and push it all the way up to the bend. And then I'm just going to trim that off, leave about maybe a half inch, maybe a little more than that, just so I have something to work with. And then I'm just going to take your vice grips and just pinch it so that you have a little bit of room. Just enough so that you can actually bend it without the weight getting in the way. And you're just going to bend that like that. That's my sound effect for bending. And just Trim it off so that it will fit inside that little bell there so it looks nice and neat and clean. It doesn't snag on anything. There. Pinch that off. Um, just kind of pull that down so that it's nice and tight. And that's basically how it's done. It's just a real simple solution. So in this day and age, with our concern over the striped bass populations, this is the best idea going. A treble hook at the head end of a plug. A bass bites a plug this way, and you've got him hooked. If you squash those three barbs, a release is so easy, it's insane. One two and the fish is off the hooks and you don't have to worry about getting hooked by a tail hook or damaging the fish's eyes or gills. It's a no-brainer especially in the atmosphere and the climate of the striped bass these days. Okay, so we're going to have a lot of fun.